This morning's scripture, we're going to talk about the parable of the lost sheep, which I told the children this morning. It's going to be found in Luke chapter 15. We're going to be looking at verses 1 through 7. If we could stand for the reading of God's word. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathered around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Does he leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulder and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. That's been the reading of, words of God's word. All right, let's kind of peel, peel the lens back on this, this a little bit here. When we start, we're starting this out, let's understand the time that this is happening. So the tax collectors and the sinners, they're all coming up and they're, they're, they're gathering to listen to Jesus. Now, the sinners we can understand, but the tax collectors, why would they be so bad? Well, in this day, the, the re, this was actually, Rome was, Rome was very smart. These guys were brilliant. What they did was they would divide the, the territory into provinces or regions. And they would put them up for bid, for the taxes. They figured out what they would need for the taxes. They would put that together. And these tax collectors would get together. They were the very wealthy. And they would bid on each of these territories. So let's say the, the province of Little Wissy came up and the, the high bidder was a million dollars. Tax collector would take a million dollars out of his pocket. He'd pay the tax and he'd go pay the taxes or collect taxes from all the little, little Wissians. Now here's the catch. Whatever he collected over a million dollars, guess where that went? Right back in his pocket. So these guys were known for being cheats and scoundrels and they were kind of lowlifes, weren't they? So you've got, you've got the tax collectors and the sinners and they're all listening to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the, the lawmakers, they're kind of, you got to understand these guys too. These guys were powerful. They knew the Old Testament, they knew God's law. They knew it well. But they, they were the religious leaders, but they had the power to write laws as well. And here's the thing with that. They were the sole interpreter. So in their eyes, here, here's the way it worked. You got God. You got the Pharisees, and here's people. There was no, you know, they they were they were it. They were above everybody else. And here comes Jesus, and you know he's going to sit down and he's going to talk to, he's going to talk to the tax collectors and the sinners, and then he's going to eat with them. How dare he? 
He's a, you know, Jesus is, is considered a rabbi. So he's kind of on that same level with the Pharisees. And he's going to let them eat with him? Why would he let someone loathe? But here's the thing. Jesus, this guy is such a communicator. Jesus is the ultimate communicator. He is brilliant in his message. He doesn't just say, you know, hey guys, let me just tell you this story about these sheep. There's a reason for everything that Jesus does. And if you look at all the parables in the Bible, they are all driven by circumstance, are they not? So in this case here, you've got to think about who he's talking to. And I read this thing probably 30 times before I caught this the other night. Who's he talking to when he tells this parable? Anybody know? The Pharisees. He's talking to the Pharisees. So he says, suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Wait a minute. In order to have sheep, you'd have to be a shepherd, wouldn't you? Uh-oh. We're not up here anymore. And the shepherd in, in, in this time, you've got, you've got God, you've got the Pharisees up here. All the way at the bottom, you've got the lepers. And maybe one rung up is a shepherd. You know a shepherd in, in, in the first century could not testify in court? because he was that low, far down on the food chain. They were nothing. So here's Jesus, he said. If you want to understand what I'm saying, be a shepherd. How could he? How could he do that? But it's ingenious what he does here. If you've got a hundred sheep and you lose one, you gotta have that one sheep back. So you run and you go find it. And when you find it, you've got, you know, your 99's out there, they're in the open country, they're safe. That one's wandering and you don't know where it's at. You, you go and you find it. You throw it up on your shoulder you're so happy. Oh, you're so happy. And you're petting him, and you're, oh, I love you. And you're rejoicing, right? And you take that sheep back, and you tell your friends, hey, I found my sheep. I'm happy. He's happy. And you tell your friends to rejoice with you. And he's more happy about that one sheep being found than he is the 99. Why is that? Because he already knows that the 99 are safe. And here's the thing about a shepherd. I think I, I've told you all before. When I was in Germany, I worked on a uh, information site. And there was a, a, an old man who was a shepherd that had a bunch of sheep, and he was standing there, and we'd find him out there, and his, he had his cane or staff, and he would sleep there watching the, the sheep. <coughs> and he would tell, he, I got to talking with him, because, you know, I was on guard duty all the time, and he was out there, so I'm going to find somebody to talk to. So... <coughs> He told me how much education he had to go through 
to become a shepherd. He had to know what kind of grass the, the sheep could eat. He could, had to know where to find clean water. If one of them got sick, he had to know what medicines and what sickness they were going through. He had to know where he could take his sheep and, and legally do it without everybody getting them. And he had to know how to keep the, the predators, the, the wolves or whatever, away from his sheep. So he almost had to be a doctor, a veterinarian, to be a shepherd. Now, it kind of reminds me, it puts me back to the 23rd Psalm, which we all know the 23rd Psalm really well. And if we look at the 23rd Psalm, which I just happen to have right here, in two different versions, I actually like this one here the best. This is the contemporary English. It says, You, Lord, are my shepherd. I will never be in need. Now, here's the thing about sheep. What can a sheep do for himself or herself? Sheep are so helpless. They can't do anything to survive on their own. And did you know that a sheep, I learned this this week, a sheep will not lay down if it does not feel safe and secure. <coughs> True story. So, you Lord are my shepherd. So God, God is the great shepherd, we are the sheep. So what do we need? He provides all for us. You let me rest in fields of green grass. So he is providing our nourishment. He finds us the green grass because that's something else that I found out about sheep. They are always in search of that greener, greener grass. Has anyone ever heard of the saying? The grass is greener, always greener on the other side of the fence. Well, there's something about that greener grass on the other side of the fence. It's that much more to mow. That's a lot more work. And a sheep will go and run himself to the edge of a cliff. He can't get down. He's got greener grass, but he's stuck there. He is so helpless that he can't go anywhere. And he will stand there, he'll eat all the grass, and he'll starve. So he lets us rest in fields of green grass and leads us to streams of peaceful water. A sheep will drink contaminated water. And you refresh my life. The King James, I believe, says, restoreth my soul. Our Lord is supernatural. He takes care of us. You are true to your name, and you lead me along the right paths. That's God's word. I may walk through valleys as dark as death, but I won't be afraid. You are with me, and your shepherd's rod makes me feel safe. That is really powerful, isn't it? So let's get back to Luke. So now, Jesus has not only brought them down to be a shepherd, 
He's also told them that we are the sheep. They are sheep. The Pharisees. And when we think of sheep, we think of these cute little fluffy, you want to pat them, little sheep. I would gather to say that in the first century, Scott, if I called you a sheep, you would probably jump up and want to fight me, wouldn't you? You'd be offended. You're too big a guy to fight, so I'd have to do something else. So, remember I said that Jesus is the great, great communicator and he's just so brilliant? He's saying all this to the Pharisees. They don't even realize he's talking about them. He's bringing in that, that one sheep and that 99 that he's not so worried about because they don't need anything. That's the Pharisees. They're the ones that really need saving. But they think in their mind they know everything. But the problem is, is they know God's law. And they're able to write law. So they add to it. And they're trying to make people do things that God never intended them. He never intended for them. And Jesus is saying, hey, you know, I don't agree with this. I don't agree. Let me give you what God intended. That's what I'm here to do. Not, not your law. Because you're, you're, you're going overboard with it. You've overstepped the, the, the power that's been given you. So it makes sense that the sinner and the tax collector that's listening to him, he would take a lot, because they're, it's kind of like that, uh, has anyone ever seen that, that painting, uh, i trying to remember who did it. It's a painting of the prodigal son, and it's a, I think it's a Rembrandt, where the prodigal son, you see the uh, the older son in the background, and you got the son up front and the father together, and he used light to, to kind of focus in, and you know where the light was at? On the older son, because that's the one that needed the help. That's the one that really needed saving. So, he lets them know that God is rejoicing in heaven when that one sinner, that one tax collector, that one little wissian repents and accepts Jesus as their Savior. He's rejoicing. But the Pharisees are so stuck in stature that they fail to see this. When we peel back the lenses and we look at it, this is brilliant. I wish I could come up with something that good. But I'm happy to be a sheep. I'm happy. I'd be happy to be a shepherd as long as I'm in God's grace. And that's what God gives us. So as we go into communion, which I need to create some space up here. <coughs> Thank you. 
we need to think about where are we in our track? Are we that are we part of the 99 that are, are in the field? And we're safe, or so we think, but we're not really following the path. Or are we that one? That one that repents and follows God's law? Which path are we on? Which path are you on? You can take at any point, you can make that decision for yourself. And if you want to make that decision today, we're here for you. Once communion is over, I'll open the altar. And anyone that wants to come forward, we will accept. We will pray with you. So, if Scott, if you could uh, help me out here. And let's turn to page 12, is it? Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the need. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Skip down to the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and joyful and It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection. You gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery, slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. Pour it out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body of blood in Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, 
and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory and we feed at his heavenly banquet, through your Son, Jesus Christ, with his Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours. Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. We could have the ushers. Thank you. 